All right, in this video, I'm going to be breaking down Breakdance. Uh, Breakdance is a page builder that is kind of come around in the past year or so. And I don't know if you guys know this, but I used to compare page builders all the time. Um, if you go over here to WordPress.tv, I've spoken at a lot of different WordCamps. Um, not every time I spoke, it, it, not every time it was, it was not recorded every time. Um, but um, like, I think the only one that's shown up right now is the one in possibly WordCamp camp Atlanta. Um, but I did page builder uh, showdown all the time. Um, I think I did it in Orlando, uh, WordCamp Orlando, WordCamp Tampa, um, and other places. So I've done done these type of presentations before. Uh, before I did it because the internet connection is not always great at a WordCamp. I sometimes... Um, or I, I realized that I can't do a live presentation. Um, I guess I could have done it with local development, but I wind up doing it with a bunch of different screenshots, and I would go through and say, all right, when you add this, uh, activate this plugin, it does this screen, and then when you log in on the back end, it does this, and I kind of walk through with all these different screenshots, and I would in a 30 minute presentation, I'd have like 200 screenshots or so. So this is the first time I've done a comparison and I've actually recorded it and had a plugin that's active. So before I've done it in with just screenshots. Um, and back then when I was doing these uh, comparisons, I was doing stuff that was covering page builders that are now a little antiquated, um, in, and I don't mean this in a, a, a bad way, um, but there are some plugins I don't like, um, like Visual Composer. Um, I would compare Visual Composer and Divi and Site Origin and Headway, and I forget all of the other ones, um, but I would compare about seven of them, and uh, it was fun sometimes to activate all seven uh, page builders and see which one actually uh, see how it breaks the site. Um, that was kind of fun. Um, but um, some of those plugins aren't as aren't as popular in my humble opinion. the the page builders that that are good contenders uh, for daily use, you know is is Gutenberg. Um, as much as I don't use Gutenberg on a regular basis, I know it's it eventually, it's supposed to take over the world and all that stuff. I just don't, I'm not there yet. Um, so um, I don't hate Gutenberg. I just don't use it uh, because it doesn't work with my, my flow. Um, and I also, Gutenberg is not at the point where I can hand it over to a client and there, it's not going to be quite as intuitive as Beaver Builder. Um, so Gutenberg's one. Another one is Elementor. Um, I um, not a Elementor user per se. I do have a few sites that I that I maintain that are Elementor, and I can move around in there, and I don't have major issues with Elementor. My only issue with Elementor is it has been it's really broken a lot of sites when upgrading, um, and that is a big red flag for me. Um, if I am going to maintain 150 websites and going from version two to version three is going to break everything, that's not a viable product that I can be, I can support. Um, the product that I am most familiar with is Beaver Builder, um, because I have yet to have Beaver Builder break on an update. I've uh, been using it since 2000 and 16 and it's 2023 so obviously that says a lot um you know in six years five or six years it has i haven't had an upgrade crash things um so that's that's nice that's why i like beaver builder uh i, you know, I wish you know there there's there's plenty of page builders out there lots of um pieces of the pie so i don't i don't feel too bad uh saying that i prefer one versus the other 
Um, and uh, you know what? I kind of skipped over Divi. Divi was very popular, and it's still, I know it's still maintained. I still have some websites that are on Divi, and their their upgrades are actually pretty pretty smooth. Um, they were just really slow to release a page builder on the front end. Um, Divi used to be, you'd have all these purple blocks and stuff on the back end, and then if you want to view what you just built, you'd have to view the front page. And that was, when, when I saw that Beaver Builder, you can, you have a front end, you edit it live right there, and um, it is a little slower than Breakdance. Breakdance is, is wicked fast, um, and just so you know, I I installed it once and I've tinkered with it a little bit. So um, that's my introduction. Uh, let's just dive in. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to go over here to Breakdance and just show you guys. I have I've downloaded Breakdance and I'm going to launch local. So this screen right here is local. It used to be called local by Flywheel, but it was acquired by WP Engine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin up a site and I'm going to call it Breakdance. And we're going to have just Breakdance installed. All right, I'm going to hit continue. I'm going to change the PHP version here. And if you guys are following me, like you want to know how to set up local dev, um, the only thing I'm really changing here, um, I'm changing the version of PHP here. It defaults to 8.1. It's January of 2023, and really most places are just now getting 8.0 up and running. So I'm not going to try to use 8.1 at this point. Um, future future people, if you're watching this and we're, I don't know, uh, towards the end of 2023 or later, switch over to uh, 8.1. Um, I'm going to use uh, Nginx and I'm going to use the newest version that I can get of MySQL. I'm going to hit continue. I'm going to set the password to something that's stupid because never set your username and password admin admin. Um, I'm just setting this up locally, and I know I'm going to remember that password. Um, but if you ever have, um, for for the longest time, uh, the default WordPress user was admin, and so sites are constantly trying to log in using that username and password, so never set it to admin. That's no-no. All right, so it's probably going to prompt me for my root password on my machine here. Yep. And it might ask me a second time. I'm not 100% sure. All right. So Breakdance is installed, and I have an SSL cert for it because I've already added that. Uh, all right. So we should be, be able to go to local and I'm going to kind of explain some of these pricings. Well, no, we're good. Um, let's do it. Let's see. Uh, HTTPS colon slash slash. Nope, not local. Uh, la, la, la. Breakdance. Breakdance dot local. All right. And then we're going to log in. And again, I am a complete newbie when it comes to this page builder. So I have installed it once, and I played around with it for 15 minutes. So I've got some basics down, but not I don't know too much about it. So just so you know, we have appearance, and then under themes, we're using 2023 right now. Uh, Breakdance is kind of interesting. It, it kind of disables the, the theme. Um, I'm not exactly sure how they do that, but that's what they do, and it's kind of cool. So let's uh, let's install the plugin. Plugins, add new, upload, choose file. I'm gonna choose this. I'm gonna hit select. We're gonna hit install. I'm not gonna drop in my license. Um, I don't really need it. Um, yeah, just just so you know, if uh, if you have a plugin. Um, and you don't have a license, the plugin will continue to work um, even if you don't have a license. It's just you can't receive updates. Um, so highly recommend um, you know 
paying for your licenses because security, uh, you get updates and, and that's a security risk if you don't, but you, things will work without a license normally. Um, all right. So when you activate the plugin, first thing it does is that it gives you two, two options here, disable the theme, which is recommended or keep the theme. And this is kind of the, do you, do you want to use the pieces of your theme, meaning the header and the footer? If so, then keep the theme because that's going to control your header and footer. I want kind of like in Beaver Builder or in the Beaver Themer, I'm going to want to have my header and footer editable uh, within Beaver Builder. So in this case, just like in Breakdance, I want to be able to create, you know, put a, a logo in the top left and put a menu in the top right of the header. And so I want to disable the theme and that allows Breakdance to um, kind of take over and control that um, that plugin or that part of the, the page. So, all right, so we're gonna hit uh, finished here. And now we're set up. And it basically takes us to a very naked page here um, that says breakdance. I'm not sure why it says free because I have the pro version. A little confusing for me. Um, we're just going to go through this the options here. So we've got templates. I can add a template. I'm not going to do that yet. I think the first thing I'm going to do is look at header and footer. Let's look at what the site looks like now. Now that we've activated Breakdance, real basic page. And you know what? I want to import a bunch of content. Let me show you guys how to do that. Um, test data WordPress XML feed. Import. No, that's not what I want. I want... I think this is it. Yeah, so I'm going to grab this XML uh, feed and import it. Let's go. I might actually have already done that. Uh, let me check. So if I go to uh, Tools and Import, and the reason why I'm doing this import is it's going to create a bunch of posts and pages. Right now, WordPress will install one page and one post, and that's it. I want to have something a little more robust with stuff in the media library and different types of post types and pages. And this allows me to uh, do that without manually uh, putting all that information in. So I'm going to hit run importer. I'm going to choose the file I want to use. And let's see, let's go over to downloads. And I thought I had the X. Oh, I do. There we go. Yeah, I've already downloaded that. So um, just so you know, this is the where you can get some test data. I'm sure no one's really following here, so it doesn't really matter. But anyway, I'm going to hit select, and I'm importing that stuff. I hit upload and import. I'm going to assign it to admin, admin, and then I'm going to hit tell it to download and import attachments. So we're going to go from... Here, here's our posts, and here's our pages, and then that's all we have. And once we're done with this import, we're going to have a lot, a lot more. And the media library is also empty, but we hit submit. It's taken a little while because it's it's not just importing post, it's importing stuff into the media library. So if you now look over here in the media library, it imported all of that stuff. It created all of these posts in here in different types of post types, which are really cool. And then um, pages, where are pages? Ah, there we are. So we have all these different levels and things like that. So this is, if you're building themes, it, it's important to test all these different 
uh, page types and post types and stuff like that. So I have now activated that. And now when you go to the breakdance page, we're going to have more content in here. So just makes it easier for us. So now we have some test data. Now let's go over here to our breakdance and we're going to go to headers and we're going to create a header because right now there's not really a header and there's not really a footer. Um, so when we first went in and activated this plugin, it said, do you want to keep your theme or not keep your theme? Not keeping your theme makes it where you have no header, no footer, so therefore you have to go over here and you have to add a header. header. Um, I'm going to call this one um, main header because uh, sometimes like if you have a blog, you can have a different header for the blog or, or whatever. Um, this I'm going to apply this to everywhere. And this, if you're familiar with um, Beaver Builder, this will remind this. This is very Beaver Builder ish. And then you can do conditional logic. Um, condition conditional logic, like you know, if it's this type of post and it does this type of thing, then then call it in. But it's it's a it's conditional. Um, then you can set priority. Um, I know what that means. I don't know how that would really apply if you had two headers and you're telling them to low you know, to be everywhere, everywhere. I don't know how priority would would work or what the point is. That's kind of weird, but it doesn't matter. Um, let me trash that. Okay, so basically main header, and it's going to show up everywhere. So I hit add. So now we've got a header that should show up on every page. So let's look at it. We didn't put anything in there, so that kind of makes sense. So let's edit it in Breakdance. And I'm not going to make anything pretty in here, just so you know. I'm just trying to show how this plugin works. I'm not trying to make something gorgeous. So this is kind of interesting. Um, so very, I mean, it's similar to Beaver Builder, right? Um, global settings, history, preferences, whatnot. Let's, uh, let's just hit add. And we're going to do columns. And one of the things I really appreciated when I was dem demoing this before, it's real fast. Um, you know, you click on this and it instantaneously appears. So I, I created a two-column area, and we're going to add a text. Uh, we'll do a heading. And I can, I'm holding down my mouse here to drop this into whichever box I'm looking for. Um, but I let go, and then we'll just call this um, Breakdance for the title of the page. I mean, normally I would upload a logo and you know put a logo in there and all that. Not not necessary for for a demo purposes, but in here you can change your typography. You can pull in Google fonts. Uh, you you have basically the whole. Here, we'll put Roboto. Mr. Roboto. Let's do Roboto Condensed. So there's Breakdance. See how fast that is? I mean, it changed. It's it's talking to Google and replacing that instantaneously, which that is a little different. In, in Beaver Builder, we'll, we'll have... I'll, be, I'll admit it. We... It'll be a little slow. <laughs> um, still love Beaver Builder, but um, this is extremely fast on the response time. Um, I'm not sure what JavaScript library, probably like React, um, to to do this, but it is it's it's wicked fast. I'm going to hit center here. Um, although I'm not exactly sure, is it really? All right, you know what? I'm just going to let it be. Um, we'll call it Roboto. We change the size and the width and whatnot, but there's not much I want to change there, so I'm just going to call that done. And then over here, I want to pull in a menu. So in Notice um, down here, wherever you see the word Pro, um, that's... 
I don't feel like I don't even need to explain this, but I will. Um, when you see Pro, that means that's included with the Pro version, um, whereas the free version will have all these other ones, but Pro is only if you've paid. Um, but that will tell you that the the free version has a decent amount of modules um, in here. So, But I'm looking for menus. So I can go up here. I'll just type in menu. Here we go. So menu builder or a WordPress menu. I'm going to go because, hold on, do I have menus? I think I probably imported some menus. Let's go see. Appearance, menus. We do. Okay, so we have a menu called all pages. That's what I want to apply. So I'm just going to put a WordPress menu in there. I'm, you know what, I'm going to drag this one over real quick. The pro menu builder. So what did that do? Okay, so I, oh, that's actually, you know what, I'm going to go with this. This is pretty, pretty slick. Um, all right, so now we've got a menu in there. And what is that based on? Let's see, products, use cases, developers. I think that's just dummy, dummy stuff. Yeah, that's just dummy uh, stuff. So it, by default, okay, you know what? I'm going to trash this. Um, oh, you can remove. Okay, that's kind of cool. Anyway, let's go back. We're going to hit add. We're going to type in menu, and then we're going to drop in a WordPress menu. We're going to tell it which one we want to use. We'll do all pages, and then voila. Or Voila, if you don't know how to pronounce it. Anyway, all right. Um, so that gives us a header, and now we're going to hit Save. And now when we go over here to the front end, boom, we've got a header with a drop-down, um, and the basics of it are there. All right, I'm going to exit, exit to WordPress. So now we have created a header. Um, let's go ahead and do the same thing for a footer. Main footer. Apply everywhere. And we will hit add. And then we will edit it in breakdance. See how fast this is? I mean, it's, it's pretty fast. Um, I like it. Um, all right, so let's look at... What am I trying to do? I'm just going to put a, a row. We'll do this. Um, we'll do... It doesn't really matter um, what I'm doing, but let's do a text section. This is a text element. And right here, we don't have a lot of control. This is literally just a text line. Let's let's do a rich text, just so you can see the difference. See, rich text gives us basically an HTML editor, and one of the things I, I kind of liked about this is how the HTML editor uh, gives you a color-coded uh, editor. Um, so if you know HTML, uh, that's kind of handy. Um, we'll just remove this, though, and just do, like, um, copy, copyright, you know, um, Actually, we'll, we'll, let's go fancy. We'll do we'll do this. We'll do. Uh, is it is it copy? What's the co um? You know what? I don't care. Uh, I'm just gonna do. I can't remember what the symbol is for copyright, but so copyright Aaron Ryman. Can't even spell my own name. You know, 2023. Woot. Um, and then, all right. And then over here, we'll just call in another menu uh, because menus are, you want to have a menu in your in your footer. Choose menu. We'll do a short menu. And then um, hit save. And now when we refresh and we go all the way down here to the bottom, in theory, yep, so there's our, our footer. And then we can close. 
All right, exit to WordPress. So now we've, um, we haven't gotten into templates yet. I would assume we can build a template in kind of like if you're doing a call to action and you want the call to action to show up, let's do it, you know, why not? Um, oh, so these are templates for to override certain pages. So if we wanted to have all of our single post, okay, that's the wrong, wrong logic. I'm not going to go there yet. Uh, global blocks, if I hit add, let's do this. Uh, a global box, this is going to be a call to action. We're going to have some text on the left and a button on the right. And we'll hit add global. So this is my call to action that I'm going to edit in here in breakdance that I just noticed it gave me a short code, kind of handy. All right, so we will do a row, or we'll do columns, and we'll do call to action, text on the left, button on the right, so this one will work, and then we'll do, let's go here, type in button, and button, drop it here, it's right there instantaneously, uh, click here for more info. And then we'll link it to, you know, contact us. You know, I don't know. Contact us. Um, we could we could link to an actual page or whatever. I'm just dropping in that for dummy purposes. And then over here, we need some text that says, you know, we'll do, yeah, we'll do this. Um, nope. So the text, basic text thing just doesn't cut it. Um, I'm quickly learning that, that a rich text is going to be much better. So it just gives us where we can bold um, easier. So um, are you looking, looking for more information? Click on the button on the left, right. This is why I have a designer. Um, and a project manager because I'm not the guy to do this. All right, so we hit save. All right, so now we have a call to action. It's not being called in anywhere, but let's hit X here and we'll go to exit to WordPress. So we have a call to action. Now we have a home page. Let's go over here. Let's create a home page and a blog page setting. So this is a, a fresh WordPress install. So that stuff is not defined yet. So um, let's see. Where is that? It's under, is it under reading? It is. So, all right, we're going to select um, front page for the home page and then a blog page for that. And I'm going to hit save. All right, so we've got all pages. Now I can go over here to the front page and hit edit on that. Okay, so right now this front page is set up to work with Gutenberg. Um, and we're not going to be using Gutenberg. Um, honestly, I recommend to use Gutenberg on your blog, um, but um, we're going to we're going to tell this page, let's stop using, um, stop using Gutenberg and we're going to switch over to um, edit and dan uh, break dance. Here's one of the things that's different. In Beaver Builder, when you do that, when you go from a Gutenberg page to, um, or how do I, how do I describe this? Um, basically your content, when you use Beaver Builder, it'll take this content and just shove it into a Beaver Builder module that you can edit so that way your text isn't lost. The the one of the downsides here is that when I hit edit in here, this paragraph, this text is completely gone. Um, so just, you know, if, if you're trying to do this, you want to hit copy, copy this text over, now hit edit. And now you can come back over here and give yourself a section, and then give yourself a uh, rich text area, and then you can go over here and paste that in. 
So that is it's not it's not that big a deal. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, if you're if you're building a site from scratch, you're you're not going to run into that issue. But that text is completely wiped out um, if if you enable uh, breakdance if you have pages that already have content. So make sure that you copy that text or whatever in there. So anyway, so now we have a a front page with some text on there, and let's try to do some some fancier things. Uh, you can drop in. I'm going to go through all of these basic modules. I've covered a couple of these. Um, should a button. Let's drop an image in. Um, choose an image. It goes into the media library. You can upload a picture if you want, or you can use something that's in your media library. I like unicorns. Um, I mean, who doesn't like unicorns? Um, all right, so that puts an image in there. We can select what size we're looking for. Um, not sure why the thumbnail. Thumbnail's not shown up probably because it wasn't, uh, it didn't generate that size when it imported, so it's not that big a deal. Um, there's a, a plugin that you can use to auto generate things. Um, but I kind of want this text on the left and the image on the right, so let's build that section to do that. So we'll go over here and we'll do two column and then in theory we can come over here and take this and drop that in and then go over here and grab this and drop it over here. Now I can make my unicorn a larger size. All right so now we're building again and not a designer anymore so I'm not I'm not trying to show that you can make things pretty or not and really beaver builder elementor all those things they're they're now at the point where it it's not it doesn't look it doesn't matter what theme you use you know it's your creativity that can make things pretty or not um the tools are are pretty solid so all right so we've got text on the left picture on the right that's handy um we can drop in videos and um, I always like it when I see this video. This this video is actually a done in Blender. It's an, an open source um, 3D animation tool. That's actually my background is 3D animation. Um, I had my six weeks at SCAD. Um, nice scholarship, though. But anyway, um, so there's... Uh, you could drop in a video. You can drop in... Um, I think you'd probably... All I see is... YouTube. I wonder if you can just drop in a Vimeo. Oh, this is kind of cool though. It can you can put your background image, drop a logo in there, tell it to loop. You can mute it. Oh, that's nice. I don't think Beaver Builder has that. Um, if I don't think you have an option to mute. Um, oh, and you can tell it to start at a specific second. That's kind of cool. All right, so that's I'm not going to keep it in there because weird but you can drop in a video very easily and then you can drop in icons and this is actually kind of important so if you had um let's say you let's do it let's put our social media icons um on the page or no let's not i i'll just show you guys that uh with the icons you can choose a couple different sets you can do the font awesome uh, five fonts, which gives us 2,103 icons. So, I mean, if you wanted to drop in all your social media icons in here, you can. You can give it a color, uh, things like that. Then you also have Icomoon, um, which gives us not as many, but Icomoon um, also allows you to extend. I think you can, with Icomoon, you can add your own custom icons to the mix. Uh, that's probably possible with Font Awesome too. It's just I haven't I haven't been a developer in a while, so I don't really know. Um, but this gives you a nice set of icons to choose from, and you can add as many as you want. So I'm gonna kill kill that icon. Um, any element that you're adding in here, just so you know, um, you can edit. You have the settings on this first tab, and then on the second tab, you deal with size, typography, and spacing. And then on the right, you can do some advanced stuff, 
like give it some custom CSS, give it a custom class or an ID. Um, and then this is one that we we use in Beaver Builder all the time. Um, the hide at different breakpoints. So you can set something up to work with on, you know, only show on mobile or only show on large uh, things like that. So that's pretty, um, pretty robust. Um, just as robust as Beaver Builder is, as, as far as I can see, um, I'd really like to see my designer, see what he can do to, to this and see if he likes it. Um, I tell you, it is nice how quick these modules uh, are added and imported. Um, all right, I don't want this video to be too long, so I don't want to go through all of these modules, but um, icon box, um, I'm not sure what that is. Let's look at it. Oh, okay. That makes sense. We'll trash it. Um, image box, basic list. Check mark list, icon list, pricing table. You know what? A lot of people like uh, pricing tables, so that looks pretty robust. So choose your, change your icon, you know, whatever. Um, can you easy, easily duplicate these? Oh, you can. So we could put them side by side, possibly. I probably got to make room for them, but anyway, so that's what that one does. We'll kill this one. Add. Um, stats grid business hours. I mean, it's pretty robust. Now, the one of the things, Breakdance is new, and to my knowledge, there's not a third-party ecosystem, kind of like with Beaver Builder and Elementor, all of those add-ons. There's a lot of add-ons for Beaver Builder that you can pay for, like Power Pack uh, and Ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder. Um, that, I don't think that exists for, for Breakdance. Breakdance is so new. I mean, it, and it took a little while for Power Pack and Ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder to, to make it to the, um, into the ecosystem um but this also has a lot a lot more modules um than than beaver builder did starting off um so that's that's good um kind of want to look at some of these uh fancy dividers what does a fancy divider look like I am a divider. Okay, not too fancy, uh, but that makes sense. We'll keep that one in there. Um, I wanted to see one of this one. Lottie animation? I don't know what that means. What in the world? How does all this work? Can I edit these things? Frame. All right, I have no idea <laughs> how any of this works. I, what's a, I don't know what this is. I want to click on these and edit these. I don't understand it. I'm gonna move on. Um, table of contents. All right, let's, uh, testimonials. You know what? Why not? Uh, animated heading. <laughs> okay. That's actually kind of cool. Um, actually we, I, we wrote a plugin to do this once, uh, for, for a client. Um, so, um, that's kind of cool. All right. Um, Google Maps, drop in Google Map in there. And you're supposed to drop in a Maps API key, but somehow you can do this, uh, use without an API key. My guess is that it's not going to be real happy when you 
get a lot of traffic and it'll probably probably allows like 10 views or something with this API key that it's putting in, but you need to get your own if you're going to use Google Maps. But this is cool. You don't have to install another plugin to do Google Maps. You can pull in stuff from Facebook uh, and Twitter uh, and Instagram, um, which is cool. There's a built-in social share button. So if we want to share this stuff, like you can uh, put this on the you know, under the title of every page or something like that, um, and that'll share, and you can add more more networks in here if you want to, you know, Reddit, Skype, Skype, yeah, sure. Um, actually, I don't even know some of these, like Pocket, um, but anyway, a lot there. Let's look at this. Let's minimize this show you guys um those are all the blocks which is a lot basic blocks and then other blocks so header builder already kind of done that um although it's probably slightly different i'm not going to go into it too much header block. um let's look at advanced all right so content toggle fancy container you know if they're smart, um, I know with Ultimate Add-on, they do something like Ultimate Beaver. I can't type. Does it help to spell it correctly? Ultimate. One thing I like about them is that they have a, um, in PowerPack does the same thing. When you go to modules, this whole list of modules that you can do, they have a working example. So you can see what, what each module looks like. Um, I wonder if, let's see if Breakdance has that design library. Oh wait, you know, it's probably in here somewhere. Let's see, um, design and build global styles. I'm going to assume it's under the elements here. 120 elements. Okay, they don't have, at least from what I can see. I um, Yeah, if I could click on one of these to give me an example, that'd be really cool. Doesn't, maybe they'll do that eventually. Again, breakdance is really new, um, so... All right, let's uh, let's go back. I wanted to get into so there's some advanced advanced stuff in here, um, but I wanted to show you some of the dynamic stuff. So this is where you can bring in if you're building a page template, you can call in tell it to call in the post title, the post excerpt, and things like that. So basically, you can build out your uh, archive page. Uh, or your single single archive page and things like that. It has a lot of dynamic uh, content that you can call in here. Um, so, again, I don't want to keep this too short or too long. Um, I feel like we could we could spend probably eight hours and do like a a course um, just going through how to build a website in breakdance. Maybe maybe we could do that at some point. Um, but this just shows you that. It's a good plugin. It's worth looking looking into, and right now it's really cheap. Um, so I'm not going to switch over from from Beaver Builder, um, and it's and it's just because I have legacy. You know, I've got six years of Beaver Builder um, sites and tools, and we have. I mean, we've written a decent amount of custom modules for Beaver Builder too. Uh, that that we use. Um, so, if if you're just now getting into it and you're trying to figure out what what to you know, do I use Elementor? Do I use Gutenberg? Do I use Breakdance or Beaver Builder? Um, Breakdance is worth looking looking into uh, for sure, especially for the price right now. Um, you know, one fifty a year for unlimited, and you get all of those modules. And if Breakdance takes off, like they're I'm sure they're hoping you know they'll they'll wind up having a third party ecosystem too where custom modules um, or other modules you know by an, another company will will probably uh, sprung up um, it all depends on 
popularity. Um, right now, let's let's actually look and see. So if we go to WordPress.org and we go to plugins, let's see if breakdance. I would assume breakdance is in here, right? Maybe it's not. It actually is not. Um, well, that pretty much sums it up. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I could greatly appreciate uh, your likes and your subscribes, so feel free to do so. I'm trying to get up to 100 subscribers. Um, you know, maybe someday I'll, I'll shoot for 1,000. But uh, right now, 100 would be awesome. Um, so please please subscribe, and thank you very much.